I made a video earlier this morning talking about how gold and silver could make big news by this week. Well, it's already happening. Silver has surged over 2.3%. Yeah, we'll talk about it and so much more as we explore. <laughs> Yeah, gold and especially silver is up. Silver is the clear winner for this Monday. Silver is up 2.35% as the market has closed now. And that's a 54 cent rise in silver's price. $23.40 is where it sits. Up above 23 now, comfortably, with gold only up $5. So gold is showing uh, a little bit of a move to the plus side, but silver is definitely making headlines here today as it's moving up dramatically. Resilience against uh, gold's woes, essentially. So what's behind this? Well, I think they're thinking about what's going on, what's going to be happening. Maybe there is a little bit of a hope that some of the supply chains and silver demand will pick up. And much as it has been reported by the Silver Institute and Metals Focus, but it's an uptick rebounding from five months lows and remaining resilience against the struggles that gold has been having. And this trading community keenly awaits updates from the Central Bank Summit in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, as I talked about in my previous video. Economic forecasts and interest rate discussions are keeping investors vigilant and, uh, you know, surges in U.S. Treasury yields and a stronger U.S. dollar have exerted pressure on both gold and silver markets. Notably, the 10-year U.S. Treasury note recently achieved a 15-year high, while the dollar maintains in a robust position, hovering above the 103 mark is what has been happening here with the, with the, with the dollar index. In fact, as I record this video now, uh, the U.S. dollar index is down slightly, but it is still above 103. It's still... Um, it's very strong. It wasn't that long ago when it went down below, slightly below 100. That was a game changer. And we'll see how that plays out. But nonetheless, uh, so the strength of the dollar combined with the benchmark 10-year U.S. Treasury note yielding 4.23% is creating challenges for silver's growth. Uh, but also you have to think about industrial demand. Um, and it is unknown really now. Uh, where things are going to go. If we do head into a recession, especially a deep recession, we'll expect demand to decrease. However, if and and demand will decrease for silver, which means that silver's prices could fall and maybe even plunge if that were to occur. But the metal is resilient, showing resiliency today, and I think that's uh, pretty remarkable uh, to see that it is popping back up above twenty-three dollars. Many of us are saying it's about time that's occurred. The Platinum Group Metals actually suffered losses today, save for rhodium, it's up $50, but uh, there's where it is. So, uh, and economists are right now kind of debating what's going to happen in, in uh, September with the Federal Reserve, their next announcement, uh, this meeting that's going to happen this week in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and we also are at the precipice of the BRICS Summit. It's very interesting to see what kind of monetary policy discussions they have there. And a recent Reuters poll of, econ of economists have hinted at a possible pause in the Fed rate hikes, with a subset even proposing a potential rate cut after March of next year. In fact, that's been kind of the, uh, the main consensus is that they will cut next year. External factors like rising Treasury bond yields and climbing home mortgage rates might reduce the Fed's appetite for additional hikes. In Asia, the underwhelming rate cut by China added to market uncertainties. And China is something to watch. Their economy um, is kind of struggling now. Um, and we saw that at the beginning when I discussed uh, how they have completely opened but have, are having a hard time opening up their markets. And hence, as well as the supply chain issues that are happening there. And they're also on a war footing, which means they're kind of a uh, uh, focusing in different areas of the, of the economy, but they do need a strong economy, at least in part. But we'll see here. Now, uh, this article that I'm referencing here from FX Empire goes on to say that silver, silver's near future is heavily influenced by 
what central banks do. Uh, so they're not even talking about industrial demand for the metal. And they should not ignore that, though, because that could completely throw everything off. In fact, I think silver is more, uh, you know, geared or more influenced by industrial uh, demand and uh, economy, economic recessions and that type of thing more so than what central banks do, although they do react to that as well, too. But that's why the gold to silver ratio is so high. But as the market anticipates Powell's address, uh, from Jackson Hole, Wyoming, any indications, be it dovish or hawkish, could instigate market movements. Uh, and uh, so that is something that, yeah, we could see, depending on what he says, there is a lot of psychology in what comes out of the Fed in the interpretation of, of his remarks. I remember I did a video about the last Federal Reserve Chair, which was Janet Yellen, uh, I think one word that she said during one of these pressers moved silver one way or the other. It was kind of crazy, but uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But it's pr pretty amazing to see. But it wasn't, it was just yesterday we saw silver struggling. Uh, and it was down 50 cents in t high 22s. Now it's $23.40 as I record this video. And the markets are completely closed. So it'll be very fascinating to see where silver goes from here. Gold, I still think is a bargain, 1895. And actually, I thought gold during the summer slump months here, a couple of months that we would see gold maybe retest $1,800 or even a little bit below that. That has not happened. I don't think that's gonna happen. Uh, but I think silver may be at the beginning of uh, crawling its way out of the very short summer doldrums that we saw, you know, uh, recently. It's been a pretty, pretty exciting summer for silver when you think about it and its moves. And today's move of over 2.3% is pretty spectacular uh, indeed. But and the one thing that I always try to remind folks about is never underestimate the psychology of the markets. This big move today could be, can be almost completely reversed. Highly doubtful it'll erase all of its gains tomorrow. But we could see a couple of days of this and then boom, and we start to erase most of those losses and in fact, it could even dip even further back down. But I do think we're seeing higher lows, as I even mentioned in a previous video about the proof that silver is about to rise soon. Well, um, turns out I was right earlier than I thought, but will it be sustained? That's the other thing. And keep in mind that, you know, silver is so volatile compared to gold that today's move with uh, gold being such a small increase at just around a quarter of a percentage point compared to silver's move at over 2.3%, that that is an indicator that uh, the wild gesticulation of silver's price could uh, backfire in terms of our hopes and our dreams for the near, very, very near future for silver. So with the thing is, is that as stackers, as holders of precious metals, we understand, or we should understand, that silver is a long-term proposition. And, and so when you hold your silver in your hand, you pay that premium. It's much difficult, much more difficult to get uh, any kind of gain out of your investment, if you think of it that way, because of the premiums you paid. That's number one. And premiums are falling. But to never underestimate how premiums can work against you when you're buying silver especially silver. So th that, when you take that into account and spot price rising or not rising, uh, then it gives you perspective that it's a long-term proposition. So always look at the charts to see how they've performed over the last you know, decade, the last 10 years, even the last five years. You can pick different points. I think it's good for everybody to kind of take a look at it and see and draw a line through the charts over the long course of time from now until you retire um, and see how it looks for you. You know, you can draw that line completely up. And if you do it, you will find, you will find pretty distinctively that silver is not going to make you rich. You are not going to profit off of silver, stacking silver like some of the pieces you see here. Well, ignore the Libertad, but nonetheless, it's not about profit. It is about maintaining wealth. It's about maintaining wealth. And, and I think that the safest way to become rich 
if you want to think about in that regard, is to stack precious metals. You know, uh, when you think about richness, you're thinking about value. You're thinking about value, and that value can be measured in dollars, but you only measure value in dollars over the long course of time. And when the rubber meets the road is when you need to or have to or want to sell. The sell price is it, unless we're actually using silver and gold to transact with. But nonetheless, we aren't doing that. We probably won't do that for quite a long time. But nonetheless, the idea is about a long-term proposition. That's what it's about. So there you go. Hope you found this video informative, insightful. That's your news for the day. If you did, I hope you will consider subscribing to the channel, pressing that subscribe button and also the like button down below. Comment in this video. Let me know what your thoughts are and subscribe. Oh, I think I already said that, right? I've said subscribe twice. Sorry about that.